Hello, how's it going? I always check to see if my mic is going now. I'm so scarred from it not working often at the beginning of a video. Um, happy Saturday, wherever you are. Um, I'm trying not to say good morning anymore since it's not morning for a lot of you. So um, happy day, happy evening, happy morning, whatever, wherever you are. So let's see, today I am making the um, deer and doe Azara, or maybe it's Azara, I'm not sure. And this was in my Needle Sharp subscription box. I don't know, um, a lot of you may not know about Needle Sharp, but it's like a box that sends you everything you need to make the project. There are three price, four, four um, selections. So I wanna call them price tiers, except that there's a curvy box as well. So it's like lightweight, um, oh my gosh, medium weight and heavyweight. Hi Christy, how's it going? Um, and then curvy. And um, I, I subscribe to the heavyweight box um, and it just means it's the top of the price thing. So I think it goes lightweight, medium weight, curvy, heavyweight. That's how it goes. And uh, I get everything I need in order to make the garment. And she even sends the stuff to make whatever view um, you want. So you don't have to select which view of the pattern. Hi, Eliza. So um, I am going to make the button front and there's buttons in my thing. I'm not sure I'll use them yet or not. You know, they're nice buttons. And let's see, there was a zipper if I wanted to do the zip version. And there's some twill tape and other things in there like that. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> How's it going? I know sometimes I think um, KB is Christy. Hi, Cheyenne. How's it going? What are you guys up to? Are you guys sewing or are you just hanging out? having your coffee, your evening tea, ice cream, I hope. You get the lightweight box, awesome. So what did you get for your skirt? This was the heavyweight. And I will tell you, I think you guys have noticed, I didn't make it yet because the, the sizing kind of scared me. I'm the largest size on their pattern. And while I know I am no skinny mini, I still feel like, um, uh, that kind of shocked me. <laughs> so I was like, okay, is the, is the sizing accurate or am I really at the top end? And I really am at the top end. So I made the, their size 46. I don't think you can read that. Can you? Let's see. It's still, it's just not sharp enough. I have the autofocus off, otherwise it gets a little crazy. Um, so the waist is 33 and the hip is 43 and a quarter. I'm somewhere in there. I don't think my hip's quite there. I think it's 42. Um, and then uh, my waist, uh, my natural waist, yeah, is, is right around there. Oh, right, the Tilly and the Buttons. Very cute. Did you guys make them? You're chilling? Sounds good. Dominique. I don't know what that one is. I don't know their patterns very much. They like ruffles in the sleeve, or gathers in their sleeves. And that's just so 80s for me, and I kind of been there, done that, you know? And I don't need any help with my shoulders. <laughs> this, this necklace doesn't look that great with this shirt. I'm kind of, it's bugging me. Maybe because my hair's up, but I don't usually see my neck. I don't know. Oh, cool, Eliza. Yeah, I'm skipping the dress box because I actually have two of those patterns. Um, so maybe I'll just make that pattern anyway because I bought it last year and I haven't made it yet. So that at least I'm still making the same thing. I still have the ash jeans to make from the January box and the um, what was the other what was the other thing I have? Oh, the knit top. I have the knit top to make. Oh, you're making an Easter dress. Nice, awesome, Kelly. That's awesome. Cool. I'm gonna look that pattern up. I'm gonna try and remember to look that pattern up. Hi, Ida. How's it going? Nice, you guys are busy or chilling, which is awesome. <laughs> it's Saturday, right? I'm trying to take Mondays off. I don't think I'm gonna take this Monday off. I'm kind of excited about some of the things I wanna do here. So, you know, when I'm excited, I just wanna do it. I don't wanna chill. I chill in the evenings though. I got really good. I used to not chill in the evenings and now I'm really good. I come home, I put on my pajamas no matter what time it is almost. And then I chill. I play video games, I watch TV, I hang out. <laughs> Sometimes I will like bake cookies or something. Cool, so oh, I did make a muslin of this. So I made a muslin because I was so nervous. Um, 
I had a few bolts of this fabric that didn't sell during my sale. So I'm gonna use it for muslins. You're gonna see it a lot. So it has these nice little style lines and I'm making the button front. So I just ironed it as if the buttons were there. So the other thing I am doing different from this needle sharp box is, um, hi hey Nancy, is I am using a different lining. You've seen me use this lining on my um, second pair of ginger jeans that I made here. Um, it's like a shirting. So yeah, see, it's button front. I thought these, <laughs> we bought this as a lining fabric for um, a uh, for one of our fabric groups and I really love it with that fabric. Uh, but we didn't really know what these were. We just liked them. And now I know they're little flowers. We kept looking at them the other way and they look like apples or bell peppers. <laughs> kind of funny. All right, so let's set that aside there. I added pockets to this pattern using some of our tricks from the pattern stream. So, um, hey, I'm using my own skills, eh? Yes, that foxy skirt turned out so cute. I haven't put my thread in yet. It comes with thread. So I just wound it on my home machine. I love the bobbin winder on my home machine because if I need a bobbin like lickety split, I can just do it on there. It's silent and it's fast and ever, ever so helpful when I need a quick bobbin. Whereas on my industrial machine, like right now, it's got a bobbin on there and it's winding as I sew. So if I wanted to just wind the bobbin without sewing, like with like wow, like fast, I have to unthread the needle and my machine sews while it's going. And it's a, just a little stressful. I'm always worried something's gonna happen. Nothing has ever happened, you know? The Q dress. I made the um I made a Nina Lee pattern from my um needle sharp box with uh it was a turtleneck dress. It turned out great, except that I had forgotten to pre-wash that fabric, and I didn't realize I'd forgotten to wash that until I was cutting it out. That's the one thing. I'm really good about pre-washing my fabric as soon as I buy it, but the needle sharp boxes, I always love the box that it comes in and keep it all in its tidy little thing, and then I keep it on the shelf, and then I forget, oh, you didn't pre-wash that, you know? Get some of these things out of the way here. Hi, Marsha. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I am kind of getting a pile of their of the needles though. <laughs> like I now I'm being really methodical and I take the needle and I put it in a little case, like you know, the Schmetz cases that the needles come in. Um, but now all of my spare little Schmetz cases are full. <laughs> and a couple of them I've had to share, so I'm writing on Sharpie. So I'm still saving them, but um, I don't really need them. So Okay, so what we're making we're making this one here here's my waistband I don't need that here's my pocket and so um, here's my lining that I'm gonna do like you saw in the little video I did <laughs> Christy Kelly is in our Facebook group that's where she posted a picture of the foxy skirt I can't remember who you are in, on Instagram though all right so I'm gonna make a little facing on my um, pocket gonna do it on the bottom of two of them so this is not in the pattern <clears throat> I just added it I love it when you guys connect I know I love when I find you guys on um, Instagram so I made a little notch somewhere but what I need so I just put a little bit and so this is the under pocket so that if uh, someone sees my pocket from the side seam a little bit, maybe less of this white fabric will show. That's why. I skipped the holiday one too, and a jacket, because I just made the tamarack. I know, I always forget about Facebook too, Christy. I'm really sorry to those people who have asked to join our group and I haven't. It won't let me from the app and my phone, so I have to be on the computer, and I'm not on my computer as much as you think, because I'm usually right here or at my table, you know? So I haven't sewn a little with this yet, but I'm, I was going to just turn this right sides together, but I think I'm just gonna hem it like this. Why does it push down at the top?
Oof. Let's push down a little bit. Meaning it's this, it's uh, not lined up at the top very well. Okay, so I'm gonna do something a little controversial on this skirt, you know me. Um, I am not going to finish the seams. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, when I was learning to sew, and you made a lined garment, you didn't finish the seams. You just didn't. Um, because of the lining, it helped protect the edges. And so, um, yeah, it's not there exactly. So um, I'm going to do that as a test for y'all because I actually don't really think edges need to be finished as much as we think they do. I know, that's kind of crazy. But um, I wore this dress yesterday that I made a, a couple years ago. It's called the Amelia. Amelia dress? Um, Amelie dress? Oh, wow. I think it's the Amelie. It's by Green Bee Patterns. Um, you've definitely heard me talk about it in the past, and I've, I have several. Uh, but it's totally bias cut. And thanks, Nancy. I feel like my palette's pretty uh, boring right now, Nancy. I was putting some fabrics away and I'm like, uh, all my garment sewing fabrics are either blue, white, cream, or blue and white, or blue, or cream and blue. <laughs> so I made, I love this dress because it's bias and bias tends to be really forgiving on our body shapes. Um, it's really, um, you can, you can use maybe a fabric you couldn't normally use for a dress, like a quilting cotton when it's on the bias because the bias gives it some actual drape. And it's really simple to sew. It's just really satisfying. I really love it. I'll definitely make one this summer, um, if not two or three. And um, see if it didn't line up. Partly because the shirting that I'm using as a lining isn't going to stretch at all, and the linen, linen is and because I didn't line it up very well at the top. So. But where I'm going with bringing that dress up is that because it's on the bias, I didn't finish any of my edges in that dress. I did top stitch all the seams because it lends itself to that. And I, when I went that, put that dress on yesterday, you know, the edges are a little frayed, don't get me wrong, but they're not like, it's not a mess. You know, bias makes it so that it just doesn't fray as much. Now the thing is like um, the pockets are cut on the straight grain. So I've been kind of watching those and they're fine. And the thing is when you don't finish the edges, it's less bulk and it just, it's just nicer on the inside of the garment. So I'm going to try that on this skirt. I know really controversial, but I don't really care. <laughs> it's just how I roll. All right, because uh, doing French seams on this skirt would be pretty tricky because of the angles. Wait, is this the right? Is this hard? This fabric kind of hard to tell the right and the wrong side. Uh, you go here. You go here. Okay. I'm going to... And I actually... That's the bottom pocket. So that's the one that'll show. Eh. Pockets don't even show, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't like the right side of the fabric to the garment. It's kind of a bummer. All right, I'm going to do this kind of French seam style. I'm not going to change my thread for this, but I will change my thread when I sew the lining together. I, and I know, I, I, it's like a 5 8 inch seam allowance for the whole skirt. It doesn't matter for my pocket. Why does my stitch length seem so long? I'm kind of tempted to do one <laughs> pocket, like the one of the pieces right side out and one of them inside out. All right, so. This is one pocket. I made it so that the pocket goes all the way to the waistband. Now, I, I really could have put this pocket on the fold right here. I just didn't think about doing it. You know? Let's iron that. It's so hard to turn my iron on these days. I had to like tilt it really far, you know? All right. So you guys are making Easter dresses. And then what else? What else are you guys doing? Talk to me. 
See, this is gonna fray a little bit. We'll just see how it goes. I'm happy to be a guinea pig. Now I could, this would be a great skirt to serge. It'd be really easy to serge the um, inside seams. But at 4.30 yesterday when I realized like, you know what, I can't do French seams and I don't really want to pre-serge all this. It'll just add a lot of bulk to the skirt. Maybe I'll just try, I was wearing that dress yesterday. I was like, maybe I'll just try not finishing them and see what happens. Because I looked at the pocket and the pockets were fine. And I didn't want to set up, I haven't set up the camera on the surgery yet. So I just didn't want to do that. Yeah, right? A little messy, but not bad. Ooh, sun on the rolls. That's a good idea. I actually have a recipe where I can make it with a, a dough that rises and one without. We don't really celebrate Easter, but like I said, we used to do this really huge um, donut day. And it came about because my, my like growing up, my mom used to make what we called dough boys on Christmas, which essentially were donuts. And, um, Oh yeah, it's right there at the edge, okay. And um, when we moved, when I like started having a family and having friends and all that, I wanted to do that tradition with my family, but honestly, there's just no way we could go through a batch of donuts. <laughs> and so, um, and you know, everyone doesn't really wanna come over on Christmas. They're doing their own thing. They have their family over or whatever. And so we moved, I was like, well, let's do, start doing this on Easter was such a huge success and I live somewhere where people eat really really healthy at the time and um it was so like taboo you know the kids were like we get to go to San Ramis and have donuts and and I wouldn't allow any real food there like they couldn't bring potluck dishes like have your breakfast and your brunch before you get here and and there's going to be juice coffee and donuts and we would make like six different kinds. Some of them were baked. Mostly all of them were deep fried. There's an orange one there. And then we had all these different toppings. It was really fun. And then we had this massive Easter egg hunt. We'd hide like 350 eggs. There'd be like 15 to 20 kids out there. We had a big yard. So it was really fun. Oh yeah, Christy. You almost got to leave like one arm, the armhole, the underarm or the shoulder open for that. Oh, the willow tank top. That'll be great. Yeah, I've been seeing some of the UK folks like dressed in summer clothes. You don't ever see that really. <laughs> is my camera drifting or is it me? You don't really need to see my lap. You need to see my sewing machine. All right, so we got my pockets. I like doing things where I like I prep, I prep my things and then I go to sew them. I'm not even gonna get to iron this. I'm just ironing. Oh, see, I sewed this one. I was like, why did that feel different? I didn't sew this one yet. I was going to iron it and then sew it. But I cheated. <laughs> oh, now you're heating up. Okay. Oh, oh, I know what's wrong. I know what's wrong. I got to turn it on. I used to always just turn it off at the strip. Because I hate turning that dial. So what's a Guthrie and Ghani kit? Guthrie and Ghani is a fabric store, right? And wasn't, was she one of, like, was one of the people, a contestant on the British Sewing Bee? Sorry, I don't watch some, I don't watch all TV. I watch some TV. I'm kind of behind on a few things. So forgive me. It's how I kind of stay sane. I don't, I try not to absorb everything going on in the world or in, in all the patterns going on. I just, you know, look for what I want. Oh, no sewing today, Eliza. You know, I'm doing that a lot too. I'm going through a lot of stuff. After going through and organizing for my move here, um, it kind of is pushing the uh, idea at the house. And you know, my parents are still um, basically homeless. So they have some stuff at my house as well. So I brought some shelving to my house to kind of get, so they have more space in the garage. So they can go up, it's gonna be great. And then that way they don't feel like they're a burden because they're not, you know, but of course they feel like it. And then they can just put as much stuff on there as they want.
Oh, okay, okay. That's awesome. Yeah, I see a lot of people post about Guthrie and Ghani. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's so funny. My husband has no idea. I mean, he kind of has an idea, but he's like, he just knows. I've done this since before I met him. <laughs> Okay, so let's see here. Um, this is the back. And because the side panels are really similar, I was really careful in how I stacked them so that I didn't have to sit there and figure it out in front of you guys. So let's see. And not, I don't, I feel like this fabric could have a right and a wrong side. If I were a weaver, I'd be able to really tell the difference, but it looks pretty symmetrical. I um, pre-washed this, but then I um, ironed it. Yeah, right, Christy? So the key with this is knowing when to pivot. And I did pretty good on my um, muslin. I could have done a little better on a couple of them. Why did you unthread? Oh, I know why you're unthreading. It's because this thread is so much lighter. That's what it is. This thread is so much lighter than what I usually use. I was, I felt like the stitches were pulling and I think that's what it is. Like I can feel it. Let me iron these pockets while the iron is hot. I should have ironed them before I stitched that. I also think like doing this French seam probably added a little too much bulk, you know? All right, so 5 eighths inch. My machine is so loud in this space. Clack, clack. All right, so when I get up there, um, knowing when to pivot is the key. I don't think we top stitch these seams. I want to. So one way you can tell is by, you could mark, oops. Mark your seam. I'm not as good with this little ruler as I as my other see-throughs. I just like how little it is. Let's see. I'm trying to line it up at five eighths. There we go. There's five eighths. Right? And then five eighths. Basically you got your your pivot point right like that. I'm gonna go on the inside of the chalk since um I put the ruler right on that 5 eighths. Yeah, that's smart, Nancy. At least that way you're consistent, huh? You know? All right, so now I'm going to clip to that point. Scrunching up your nose helps you see better, just so you know. That made that pivot nice and clean. It was really easy to do. Because you, you don't really want to stretch this. It wants to stretch because it's on the bias right there. So now we have this um, turn right there. I'm going to look at this side and I'm going to clip it if I need to. I'm not going to until I see what it looks like. Let's see how I did. So there we go. And see, the seam allowance wants to press that way. That's why I say surging it would be really easy, right? Super easy. Now, if I top stitch this, that would help um, keep the um, seam allowance less fraying. But you know what I think I could do? I think I'm just gonna stitch the edges together. This is the um, poor sewist seam finish method. Right? just an option why not I could probably trim that down I'm not going to all right let's do my other one yeah X is good that's awesome Nancy yeah whatever it takes right ensure success and especially with um, this pattern um, 
I am wanting to pivot with um, this piece on top. Let me show you better here. I find that it's easier to sew with the piece that needs to pivot. I think that's how I did it the first time. But the thing about that is that then you are sewing one from the bottom to the top and one from the top to the bottom and then you could have some um, issues just naturally because um, you're pulling the fabric and you don't realize it, you know. So here, let's do my little mark again. Ensure success, right? Let's see. I have there's a little like hash mark right here. I don't know if you can see that. A little hash mark right here. So that's my five eighths, right there. That's what I'm lining up. It's a little awkward because I'm kind of doing it after the fact. I love how much better you guys make me. I would totally have not done that if I were sewing without an audience. <laughs> I'm cutting right up to that. Yes, you scrunch your nose, remember. And see then, I pivot. Can you see that very well? And it just wants to do it. Making the muslin was really nice because <clears throat> I could also decide what length I wanted it to be. And so the reason I decided to go with that size, I would have almost done it without making the muslin, but um, I was kind of curious. I kind of wanted this to work out, you know? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I feel like it's intermediate. I mean, you know, doing those little um, pivots could be a little bit of an issue, you know? I can't see very well if I've, if I've uh, cut right up to it, but, because I'm seeing a little tuck right there, but I think when this is pressed this way, it's gonna be okay. There's a little bit of sheen to this chambray. It's really nice. I'm gonna press it a little bit. Yeah. Threw my chopstick in the trash. I'm just gonna press a little bit and then um, we'll do a we'll do a better press in a bit. I just wanna see how those are looking. I didn't do a good job on the left one, but it's look pretty good. So when I went to do the lining, I almost tried to make the lining not with these panels, just push these pieces together and then trace it out as one, but there is actually a little bit of a um, shaping going on in there. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, well that could happen, Nancy, unless you trim off the excess of the seam allowance before you sew it. So if I had done a 3 8 inch seam on this, it wouldn't have lined up quite right, and then I would have gotten puckers too. So the, if you want to do a smaller seam allowance, which I'm all for that obviously, like the 5 eighths are kind of big for me, um, I would trim off a quarter of an inch, like say you want to go 3 eighths, trim off a quarter of an inch off each side, and that's so easy with one of those like see-through rulers, you just line it up the quarter inch and zoop. And then um, just write, write reminders. Okay, I made this three eighths of an inch, you know, and then it should line up better and you probably won't get those puckers, you know? That was always the big thing when I was um, sewing with the teenagers is they would um, wonder why their garment wouldn't fit. And I would say, well, you sewed it with, you know, quarter inch seams and it was supposed to be five eighths and um, they would also have trouble getting their seams to line up, you know? I'm just stitching the seam allowance, doing my, my um, little <laughs> non-sewing, or non-finishing finishing. I'm gonna backstitch out that cut. 
It would be better for me to put that stitch really close to that edge, but I'm thinking about trimming this down a little bit. That's why. It's not gonna fray past that edge. And after a while, it'll stop fraying because all the frays will have happened. And it'll be a nice flat seam. If you look open up tailoring, they don't, tailored garments, they don't finish all the edges. Maybe they bind some of them if they're exposed, but that's about it. Maybe in modern things are different, but that's how it was before. <laughs> We, for, we ha finally had our first really hot day the other day and uh, it was after I streamed here and I was wearing jeans and, a, and I switched to a t-shirt and went to my old place and cleaned and I was so hot and um, I was just thinking, dang, I've been like one of those people, crazy people going, I'm ready for the sun and the heat and then I was just sweltering. It took me two hours of sitting there. Like I'm literally, I forgot my broom so I was literally like on my hands and knees like dusting the ground before I washed it. <laughs> like a silly <laughs> person and I, I should have just gone and got my broom but the floors, the little hard floors are really small there. It took me two hours to remember I could turn the air conditioning on. Made a huge difference to my work ethic and morale once it kicked in. I was like, okay, I'm going to stay and finish. It's pretty funny. All right, five eighths inch seams. Just kind of lining it all up. Oh, I'm doing this from the wrong side. Be easier on my side that I would pivot. Whoops. So let's do my, I don't like, like my, this, the, there's a big jump where my bed of my machine, that was a little easier, huh? Oh, forgot to scrunch my nose, huh? All right, got that. And then now I'm going to pivot the underneath piece. Now that didn't look like it. This doesn't look like it's lining up. And maybe I got my seam allowance off right there. Oh no, that's fine, that's fine the heck? Why is this? Maybe my length is not, uh, hmm. I already cut that, but I'm going to back it up. I just want to look and see what's going on. Cause see, you see how this, if I go to pivot this, you see how much is hanging off this edge here? The seam allowance. It shouldn't be like that. It should be lined up like that. That would create a pucker. It's probably because when I adjusted the length of my skirt, since I'm not going with the pre-made length and I adjusted it, I probably um, got it off a little bit at the bottom down there. Oh, that's smart, Nancy. This is like a bump. It's almost like a quarter of an inch taller. Like I wish it was flush, you know? I'm just gonna back it up and see a little bit if that's what it is. Yeah, so I think what I need to do is sew this from the top down and then that way um, it doesn't matter as much at the bottom if it's off a little bit, but I need it to be okay at the side seam and at this pivot point. So I'm gonna do the responsible thing. I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna try not to um, Stretch it while I do. This fabric's pretty fun. So I was thinking, you guys, we need another sew along. Me Made May is next month. Do you guys think we could rally and do a sew along for Me Made May? And I was thinking um, that we could do a dress and um, maybe we could talk about which dress you know that we want to do if you guys are down for a dress 
Um, that Wixton Shift, just that just came out, seems to be really popular. It looks like it fits a wide range of sizes. Um, that silhouette, not my favorite silhouette on me, but I was thinking that um, if I made it short enough and maybe in the right fabric, I could probably make it work. Because I, I think with a belt, it would look kind of weird on me. You down, Nancy? Yes. So along. I really love doing our so along. It was really fun. Would you guys like to do something um, a little more labor intensive so that we can like drag it out? Or do you want to do something like that's um, instant gratification? Do you want to do like four sew alongs and really pump them out? Um, what are you guys down for? A simple everyday dress? Okay. So, so maybe at the end today, we could kind of look on the internets and see a few, you guys make a few suggestions. Um, I would vote for that Amelia dress by Green Bee Patterns that's on the bias, um, but I don't know how many sizes it comes in. Yeah, and the Wixton ship. Are their patterns expensive? Oh, I didn't know that. I've, I've, I haven't bought any of her patterns because the one that's, she makes the washi dress, right? Is that right, the washi dress? Um, because the washi dress is definitely not for me. I have boobs. <laughs> and that one is for people who don't or are they just look maternity for me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, right, Eliza? I know, I was thinking about that too. Okay, Christy. You guys, Eliza and Christy are like, simple, hard. <laughs> I love dresses. I wear them all the time in the summer. They're just more comfortable, you know? So I'm down for a dress. Um, maybe something that has uh, variations so that you could ramp up the difficulty if you want or keep it simple, you know? Oh, I've heard of that dress, the Kielo wrap dress. I like the idea of wraps. They don't usually look good on me. Oh yeah, which one? Like I've made the tea house. I would totally make the tea house dress again, the Sew House 7 tea house dress. I feel like that one has a few skills that you can um, build on. Um, all right, we're gonna start from the top this time. I already cut it. I hate it when I've already cut it. Not great. Southport. All right, let me um, let me get a piece of paper. Oh, I have it. I've set up my little cart. I'm keeping it organized. All right. Okay. So far, we have the Kielo wrap, Wixton shift. Wait, what did you say? Oh, Southport. Okay, Amelia. I know, it's gonna be hard to come to a consensus. Which tea house, which uh, sew house dress did you make, Christy? All right, tea house. And my vote is for the, it's the Amelia or Amelie by Green Bee. Um, the Moneta is great, but it's knit. I can make a Moneta in a half hour though. It's pretty quick. <laughs> they're, they're really quick. I had to stop myself from making Monetas after a while. I was had a little bit of an issue. Too many Monetas. Um, I like, I think like dresses that are more fitted than not are tend to be more um, versatile for body shapes because things that are a blump Make us, you know, we all kind of feel like, oh, that'll be easy to fit, but then it doesn't, it's not very flattering. I want you to wear it, you know? That's why I like day dresses, like something like button front with a waist seam, darts, collar, you know, think 40s. <laughs> but that, I know that that is a definite, very specific look, very, you know, old school feminine. So um, I'm open to something more interesting. You know? All right, let me get this show on the road here. 
This is a really, this could be a really fast scare, even if, even though it's lined. And I'm, I'm like, chatting it up. All right, bye, 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 soon. You can see this wanting to stretch out. I recommend if you guys cut one of these out that you um, sew it right away or um, put some stay stitches in because it will probably start to get stretched out. Right. Let's hope I got on the right side of that. Okay, see now it's all lining up. Oh, I'm a little bit over, but I was really worried about that pre-cut spot. Q dress. Oh yeah, is that in your? Is that your? Um, is that your um, needle sharp? I should go through some of my patterns because I have some dresses I haven't made yet. All right, I'm not going to line up the bottom because I think one of them is going to be off. Yeah, see? That's what's happening. When you have style lines like this, it's way more important to nail the style lines than it is your hem. Your hem can probably suffer a quarter of an inch. Mississippi Avenue dress. I haven't heard of that. Or it's Simplicity 8231. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna, um, if we have time, I'm gonna I'll pull up my computer screen and we'll look at dresses together. I love doing our sew along, the Mountain View pull on jeans. That was really fun. Yeah, right, Christy? And pockets. All right, let's not make another right front, right? Isn't that what I have here? Or a left front? I have a left front. Now I need a right front. And see, I really want to sew this from the top down. But um, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. So I'm going to try and line it up. It's really just better to have the piece that's going to pivot on the top. So we're going to line it up first. We can even, you know, start to sew along towards the end of May, you know, or like maybe two weeks into May. People don't have to sew along right at that moment. You know what I mean? Like we are casual here, right? Here, let's do it on here too. That way, um, I do, I like over mark, I start overdoing things like this when my mind is thinking about other things. <laughs> so I don't have to think about this. I'm like, okay, let's spoon feed this to myself by drawing all the lines while I think about dress patterns. <laughs> okay, Christy, that's so great. Good for her. Okay. So now these bottoms are kind of lining up. It's still a little bit off. I don't like the way this thread sounds in my machine. I can tell, you know. It won't hurt it or anything, it just doesn't sound quite right. All right, I get to my pivot point, lift up my presser foot, scrunch up my nose. I'm scrunching up my nose so my, my bifocals get higher. <laughs> age it's wonderful all right yeah tell us the price of that wixton is it printed is that why it's expensive like pat i'm used to patterns being like between 15 and 18 dollars printed you know that looks pretty good. This fabric is so forgiving. It looks like there's a tuck. There's not. You see this fabric? It's not a flaw, but it's definitely a, w a weird weaving thing right there. Oh, it is a flaw. 
Look at that. Would have been nice to notice that a while ago. All right, um, now we can put on our pockets. Let's do that. Why did I make my pockets already? I feel like um, I just made it a little complicated by pre-making them. Oh, let me stitch my seams. Mmm, okay, Ida. We could also do a, a, a top skirt, top skirt combo, you guys. What about shorts? I don't know if Ida would need shorts either. Ooh, getting close there. I don't really need more light for the stream, but um, maybe it's just me. I need more light to sew. It's just, this thread matches so perfectly. Kudos to her. I'm using it because none of mine match as well. And I was scared I would start going top stitch crazy, you know, like I do. And I was like, okay, you need to use her thread if you're gonna go top stitch crazy. But instead, I'm going to stitch all my seam allowances. <laughs> That's my brand of crazy today. I'm just stitching right next to that seam line, see that extra stitching I did. The good thing about style lines like this is you're not really going to revisit them to um, for sizing. Like you don't really need to visit this seam and go, oh, I need all that seam allowance just in case I need to let it out. You really, you can't give yourself any girth or length with this seam. It's just decorative. Oh, okay. You can make your shorts shorter and use as a top. What? Oh, mate, nice thing with dress patterns is that you can make them shorter and use as a top. That's true. And that Wixton shift is a top and a dress. Oh, right, Nancy? I know. I've been using that Thea Rochelle raglan over my jeans. I planned on wearing it like over leggings but or like tights, but it was a little short <laughs> for me to do that. Shorts would be fun or... or or doing a dress that can be a top, you know? So uh, just so you guys know, if you go to the Wixton website, there's a ton more pictures on different bodies on their website. I'm not a big fan of the sleeve is the only thing with that one. Like I really, like it's just, I don't know. You know me and sleeves though. Um, so if you wanna see it on a variety, more variety of body types, um, there there's a lot more pictures on there, so. All right, how do I sew a pocket? Let me remember here. Uh, let me let me sit here and try and remember how to do this. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm gonna do this at five eighths, right? I can't remember. <laughs> So this, this is the opening. No, this isn't the pocket I want. You are not the pocket I want. This is the pocket I want. I thought that I had that one. Okay. I have my little notch where I want the opening. Yeah, I know, I know. I should know how to do this. 
Good thing I notched it on both because I can tell this uh, chambray really wants to get stretchy. All right, here's my opening. All right. Right, like that. No, what am I doing wrong? I'm forgetting how to sew a, um, <laughs> I'm forgetting how to sew a pocket. <laughs> oh man, I'm distracted. Here, I'm gonna clip my seam allowance. I feel like this is the Charlie Kaftan all over again when I did the vent and this, the French seam. Remember that? I was like, wait, <laughs> what did I just do here? <laughs> what did I just get myself into? <laughs> Right, and then all my seam allowances, poke forward, poke forward, poke forward. Wait, why aren't you clipped? Are you, you're clipped. Why aren't you, oh, there we go. Okay, there you go. Let me iron it. Here, I can put my iron, my iron camera. It's, t oh, it's not PDF. Is it not PDF? Sorry, I forgot to configure the iron cam. Let's see if I can do that a little bit better. It wants to be um, blurry. Okay, that's a little better. Not much though, huh? Twenty dollars, and that's printed. Is that what you're saying? did this right. <laughs> it's not fancy at all. <laughs> <laughs> right, Amelia. <laughs> it's not fancy though. <laughs> it's like the, uh, it's the, I don't know where I got that little camera, but I've had it. I can't remember. It might, probably came with my computer. No, it didn't come with my computer. Pretty sure I saw this correctly. I should ask an expert, huh? All right. I'm going to tack it up here too, but I want to make sure it's nice and flat and it's not pulling and doing something weird. That's more important. Okay. I just need to make sure, you know, that I go right on here, these little corners there, you know. <laughs> 
instead of Iron Man, it's Iron Cam. <laughs> All right, where's my other pocket? Oh, here. Okay, how did I do that? Oh, let me iron this real quick. Just need the side seam to be pressed a little bit better. Mississippi dress, okay, I'm gonna check that out. It only comes printed. Interesting. I like printed patterns, you know. I just sewed that at 5 8 and seamed, and I <clears throat> need to fix that. Trying to stick to the seam allowances. It's so hard. 5 8 man. Who came up with 5 8 Where do they live? I'm gonna send them something. It's so quiet in this building on Saturdays. All right, time for the iron cam. <laughs> That's oddly satisfying. It's kind of in my little ironing zen. I don't want that white to show though. I should understitch it probably. That would have been a good idea. It's funny, you know, like I watched you know, as you guys know, I watch streamers. I watch gaming streams. I know, weird. But um, I'm starting to understand some of the things that they're talking about or their sponsors. Like, I'm like Elgato. I don't know what the Elgato is. And they're sponsored by Elgato, you know. <gasps> Bye, Eliza. Have fun coloring eggs. My daughter's in the doghouse right now. And I'm like, dang, I don't even want to give her my, <laughs> my Easter gift. <laughs> oh, right, Amelia? Yeah, so this thing called an Elgato, it's called an Elgato Stream Deck. And what it is, it's like basically like this little, it's like a remote for streamers and it, it has buttons. And so you can just go and then it would be Iron Cam, me, you know, the, 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 the thumbnails I put on there. It's pretty cool. Or a little, or, you know, if I wanted to all of a sudden put a lint lava animation on the screen, I'd press a button, lint lava, on, you know what I mean? Like that, it's pretty cool. We're not there yet. <laughs> I don't even have a camera on those machines over there. So, all right, so let's continue on. Now we are back on track with the um, instructions. So I can do my front and my back. 
and we'll have a skirt. The heck? Look at that! I caught my side, my uh, skirt in there. The heck? This is what happens when I try and keep my whole skirt under the camera. It's a little close for comfort, you know? Anna double stitched it. Where was that? Where did I just take that out? Come on. It was on the seam. Where was it? Oh, maybe it was just in the um, extra stitching. What the heck? What the heck? I'm going to pull on this. Make sure my seam's not going to come apart. All right, must have been with the uh, little extra stitching on that I put on there. All right, all right. All right, side seams. Oh yeah, I did, Christy. She's, she's uh, was and still is um, super opinionated. You know, like most kids are. Um, when she was two, she stopped letting me dress her. Like I was, it was just done. <laughs> And um, and she went through the whole. Um, she would wear like those really tacky princess dresses before kids were doing that and socially acceptable in public, you know, because you know my daughter's sixteen, so it was kind of a while ago. And my my uh, parents and I we went to um, Disneyland at one point, and there was a Lego store out there, and um, they had this princess dress, and my daughter was pretty into dress up. She's not a girly girl, doesn't like dolls, stuff like that, but she liked dress up. And <clears throat> um, my mom, of course, was like, yeah, we're buying her that, and I was like, okay. And then she put it on, and she didn't take it off for like two months. The sleeves had the see-through crap on, you know, like chiffon, and that just fell apart, um, you know. Oh man, that thing was tacky. And then, um, and then it was like that with a lot of things. She would get kind of obsessive about one garment, you know? So you don't have to match your decorative seam here because I, I do, don't because of the pocket, but I'm still gonna try and make it look like it matches. And then I'm kind of slightly pull the pocket a little bit just so I make sure I don't catch it. Um, but she would request things, you know what I mean? Like she would request, uh, I want a spinny skirt, mama. And she wanted it right now, you know? Um, and then when I was trying to work, um, like eventually, remember I, I just told you guys a story about the fact that she just would not go into my office. So I eventually had to let the office go and um, we had an extra room. I just downsized and brought it into the house and I would try and work at the house. And sometimes she would hang out with me on my table cutting things. My daughter used real scissors very early on. We didn't have any of those uh, those safety ones for very long. Um, and she would just sit there, you know, with me doing stuff. And it was a way to get some stuff done, but to also engage with her, you know, like on what I was doing, you know. And so, um, let's see, did I catch my pocket corners good? Oh, it looks pretty good. Look at that pocket. Ooh, look at that. Not bad. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Good job, Sammy. Um, and um, like one day I remember she was like, what did she want to be? She wanted to be a turtle? I think she wanted to be a turtle. Like right that second. <laughs> so I made her a little like little turtle shell with batting in it and like darted it so that it had the kind of like shape and then I put elastic on it and instantly she had a little turtle shell, you know, um, that floated around. We've handed it around, you know, to other kids and um, things like that. And then of course she got to the phase where she wanted to design her own clothes and have me make them. <laughs> and of course she always wanted my nice supplies and stuff like that. Um, 
Yeah. But I would definitely make her things to wear, you know, occasionally. Because I wanted to and it was fun. Um, for our wedding, um, I told you guys the story a long time ago. But she, when uh, she learned she got to wear something special in the wed my wedding. Because uh, we got married after we had her. So she was about three. Um, I'm pulling my pocket out of the way a little bit as I hold the team out. She said, I want a rainbow pony dress. And I was like, a rainbow pony dress? Huh. That sounds interesting. <laughs> and um, I was making her a dress out of the same fabric my wedding dress was going to be, which was just embroidered. I didn't use, like, I didn't wear, like, a white dress. I wore, like, a cream-colored dress with embroidered flowers all over it. The fabric was already embroidered. And so I made her a mini version of it. And I made the back of it cut a cut-out heart, you know, so I thought that she'd be into that. But as soon as she said that, I was like, Okay, I'm not going to show her this dress. And then um, my friend and I were shopping far away. Like, we, we, there wasn't much where I lived, so we were shopping kind of far away. And we were at an um, a outlet store for the Gap, because there was no Gap there, so we went to the outlet store. And um, I, didn't, I don't know if I checked my seam, my matching. Oh, it's pretty good. And lo and behold, I'm not kidding, there was this um, lavender shirt. <laughs> I'm like, am I boring you? Um, lavender shirt, and it had a horse embroidered on it. Like it was like an applique on there. And I think it had rainbow wings and a rainbow tail. And then there were socks, identical, same horse, with the rainbow lavender socks. And so I was like, okay. And so then I went and got rainbow, hideous rainbow striped fabric. I mean, it wasn't hideous, but... It was something. And I made a skirt and I attached it to the little shirt and made it a rainbow pony dress, okay? So um, I am all about that reverse psychology, you guys. The problem is now my daughter, it does the reverse, 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 reverse psychology on me. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so I was like, oh, Cricket, look what I got. I got your, uh, I got your rainbow pony dress because my this is my rationale. I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it to her, and she's going to be sick of it before the wedding, and then she'll be interested in the one I made for her. Um, and so I, she was beyond delighted with the rainbow pony dress and the socks that matched and all that. And she wore it every day, and then she got a little tired of it, and then I was like, Hey, what do you think about this dress? It looks like mom's, which that doesn't... doesn't just because it looked like me, that was never something that Cricket would go for. She was more like, I don't want to look like anyone but me, you know, which I always tried to honor that, you know. But, you know, I wouldn't have forced her to wear anything she didn't want to do. I really am not, I wasn't that kind of mom. I would have been like, wear what you want, kid. It's on you, you know. And, um, and with her, that was always a really good way to do things anyway. She's super smart that way, you know. So... I think I saved the rainbow pony dress. I may not have. I may have handed that down. But me and my friend Sunny were just like, oh my God, this is it. <laughs> we saw that. Because <laughs> my friends were delighted that she wanted to wear a rainbow pony dress to my wedding. Of course, you know. <laughs> I was the first to have kids with my friends. <laughs> they all had babies at my wedding. Potatoes. They brought potatoes to my wedding. I had... <laughs> I had the full thing, but I had a bouncy house at my wedding, you guys. Like, there were a lot of three-year-olds in my life at the time. So I hired nannies. I made macaroni and cheese and snacks and cheddar bunnies, and um, I got a bouncy house, and I was like, have fun. <laughs> so that was my wedding, and it was at a winery. <laughs> but that worked. <laughs> All the parents could have a good time. They didn't have to worry. There was something their kids would eat and do. So... We had art projects, all of it. Still sticking with my hair, my double sew trim seams. I am so happy with this. You might see me do this more often. Does it feel like a cop-out that I'm doing this? What do you guys think? 
Are you thinking I'm crazy? Are you hoping it works so you can do it? You want to know what she ended up wearing? Um, I have a picture. I have a wedding picture somewhere. I'll bring you. I'll show you guys a wedding picture. I didn't end up making my dress. I designed it, but my friend made it. Much better sewer than me. Um, and uh, she did an amazing job. She even made me a little pocket, a bound buttonhole pocket um, for, my, for the ring that I would hand in my husband. It was... Oh, she did such a beautiful job sewing it and mine had a clear back as well so I put chiffon on the back like I went it had little straps and then it was a diamond on my back that was um, see-through fabric and we lift we cut off a lot of those embroidered flowers and vines and, and she hand sewed them or applicate them somehow on that clear she did such an amazing job that's why I was like oh crickets gonna wanna She's going to want to see through back on her dress too. And so that's why I did the heart, you know, which was not easy to sew, by the way. I was like, what was I thinking? And her dress was very simple. It had a spinny skirt. So if she spun, she, her <clears throat> skirt would go up, you know, because I thought that would be a good selling point to get her to wear it. And then I made her bloomers that had spangles hanging off of them so that, you know, because this was, this was my kid. She would just sit there with her dress, you know, chewing on it. And it would be up to her navel, you know, all the time when she was that age. She was basically loved being naked constantly. So getting her to wear clothes was hard. She had to wear what she wanted. All right, let's put this aside. Let me sew my skirt, my lining here. I'm talking way too much. <laughs> there weren't even, there weren't cell phones like there are now back, you know, like, so like having all the, like I have all the pictures, but they're not digital. Like, I think they were digital and then they got printed, you know, and then they deleted them, you know, like it, that wasn't the way then, you know, it's so weird. So short time ago. All right. Yes, I know this is cream thread and my fabric's more white, but I'm wearing it. Not you. Um, I just need something to sew on. I need a little piece of scrap fabric there. If I put a piece, oh, I do have a piece of scrap fabric. It's right here. I set my card up so nicely. So happy. <laughs> okay, so here we are again. We'll do these quickly. No, this is the front. It's hard to see the um, right side of the fabric. This fabric, I mean, I like it, but it's inter. You know, it's like when I bought it, I had something in mind for it. And then I ended up using the fabric that I bought to go with it um not for what i what i planned on doing i needed fabric really bad for something and um this has been kicking around and it's so interesting to me because it has like this is this is actually woven shirting like that's woven in there but the the flowers are printed on they look like um they're printed to look like they're stitched i think i don't know the printing is really nice though it's really saturated you know <laughs> You know, the other funny thing about Cricut was Halloween. She always, um, that's not five eights. Um, she always would change her mind. Like what kid doesn't, right? And it would just drive me crazy. Like, have you made my purple fairy dress yet? And then I'd be like, no, I'm waiting for you to change your mind. I'm not gonna change my mind. I'm not gonna change my mind. Where's my dress? Where's my dress? And as soon as I would make it, she would change her mind, you know? I could see this one really well because this fabric's been the uh, see-through fabric. It's not see-through, but you know what I mean? Like I can see kind of um, through it. That's why I didn't take the, didn't mark it like I have been. I'm just going to trim this. I'm not going to 
double stitch this because this is not gonna this stuff's not gonna fray it might get a little fuzzy on the edges but this shirting is is too tightly woven that helps so much the chambray is very open weave in a way you know it's very loose you can see it fraying This is not five eighths right here. I can see it. Two iron. I can't see the right side of the fabric. Oh, the green line Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did you did did anybody get a subscription to making magazine? magazine making zine that's where i got that <clears throat> the um, noodle head making backpack out of well I actually didn't get it out of there i saw it on noodle heads site and i bought it from there and then when i saw that it was in the making magazine i was like oh and so then i bought making um because i i know that gal she interviewed me on her po her wolfful podcast a long time ago and um so i subscribed to it there is a dress in there that actually is uh, pretty cute. And once you have the magazine, you have access to the pattern for free. So there's that. And that magazine has a lot of projects in it. It's pretty cool. Everything, knitting, felting, weaving, dyeing, uh, sewing. There's even a couple of cooking recipes in there. It just came out. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, I have it right here. Let me see. This one, have you guys seen this? This dress. I think shorter, this would be really cute and it's on the bias. It's almost like the Amelia dress that I really like, but um, it doesn't have a set in seam. So yeah, there's all kinds of interesting stuff in this. There's definitely a color theme going on in this issue. <laughs> definitely a certain aesthetic, you know. Even the ads match <laughs> the color theme. These look fun just because there's binding. I'm always a sucker. Little bunnies. And this is carried at a lot of yarn stores and stuff. So here's that dress. Um, actually, is it knit? This looks knit. Let's see, woven fabric with drape. Oh, okay. So, this would be a very simple fabric, simple dress to sew. There's a leggings pattern made by um, Cowpatch. Yeah, so. Yeah, isn't it pretty? They're definitely got a very specific aesthetic and they work really hard toward keeping it that way. Let me show you even the ads. Look at that. That's some thorough uh, planning. <laughs> I think there's four a year. There may only be two a year and it's not cheap. Okay. I'm being very methodical because um, the fabric is so hard to tell the right and wrong side at first glance. <laughs> yeah, each issue has a theme. Like last year, they had the color issue and the black and white issue. And the color issue is the one that um, my backpack came from. Not my backpack, but you know, the needle head one. And then, um, I think about right there, about right there, yeah. I 
I have I have those issues as well. They're on my shelf right here. There is no shortage of things to make in the world, is there? My husband dropped my car off this morning and um, he was like, my, ah, oh, it's my little, my little sun catchers are so loud. And so I got rid of the two noisy ones and now there's only three on there. <laughs> I have three in the closet that are like holiday themed, you know, like Christmas or Halloween that my friends used to give me. And then um, I have uh, had five left on the on the windowsill, but two of them were just so loud. Look at that narrow seam allowance right there. Yikes. I didn't even think about measure, uh, measuring, um, matching the stripes on this, but you know. They're like 25 bucks each, yeah, I'm pretty sure, because the subscription's like 49 delivered to your door. You know, so um, you get a lot of stuff in there, a lot of patterns to do things. You could really get your money's worth if you wanted. So it's, you know, if you're just getting it for one pattern, then yeah, that might be an expensive pattern. But if you want it for all the other things, it's a great, great deal. It's very inspiring. This isn't very hot. I'll trim this seam allowance while it's warming up a little bit. Right, Christy? So many things to make so little time. That's why I think it's so worth figuring out what works best for you. <clears throat> you don't have to make everything. And so many things are already out there. They're out there more than once, you know? Just trimming. There we go. Now it's hot enough.
Have you guys heard of um, ASMR? Do you know what ASMR is? I don't. I, I uh, don't know what it stands for. I mean, like it stands for something, but I, can't, I don't know it off the top of my head. I feel like watching someone like cut like that, like that would be satisfying. So ASMR is like um, um, people <clears throat> film themselves doing something that seems kind of satisfying to watch, like like cutting through FEMA, oh, you know, like clay or um, squishing something or making a noise or something like that. If you look it up, you'll see like tons of ASMR. In fact, I think because I'm a video creator and a lot of my, all my things are tagged with like video related tags on Instagram, I get tons of ASMR suggestions if I go to like explore which is like the little magnifying glass you know on your Instagram thing um my explore is filled with ASMR and some of it I just I'm like oh I can't I can't watch that other times I'm like oh I just want to sit there and watch <laughs> watch them do that you know like it'll be uh I don't know you, you just have to look it up the, yeah, I know, the food ones, I know, exactly. So, um, or like there's, people will tap their nails on things or whisper. Yeah, um, yes, right? Yeah, like the talking quiet, I'm like, um, and my explore is filled with that. I mean, it's better than when it was filled with some of the cosplay because yikes, <laughs> that stuff's like rated R, but um I was just thinking like watching me cut that seam allowance could be so ASMR for a sewist. <laughs> yeah, the ones with sound, I know. It's a little too much. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I, people would say, oh, that's so ASMR, and I had no idea what they were talking about. And I'm like, huh, what am I missing in the world? I know what they're talking about now. All right. Just doing the side seam. Then we're going to attach the... Uh, Gonna start attaching these two together. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I need to hem. I think I need to hem my skirt and the the lining. I may look at the directions, see how they suggest it. I was gonna do it a certain way, and then when I saw the directions, I was like, oh, maybe I'll try that. I try not to deviate from the directions much but I know I do I know so I made my lining two inches um, shorter than my outer skirt the pattern was about that two inches seemed fine because remember I changed I kind of went with my own length I went just below the knee So if you were doing the zippered version, um, the lining to the skirt's a little simpler because um, you know what the ASMR means, Christy? It's not, it's not naughty or bad or anything like that. You can Google it and you're not gonna be like, yikes, you know. Um, it's just something like people do that um, others may find soothing or, or like satisfying to watch. You know, like when people watch me bind on that binding machine, they would be like, oh, this is, I could watch this all day. You know, that's very ASMR. But usually it's texture or sound related, it seems to me. I can't remember what it stands for. It has a whole long, weird word, word name. <laughs> okay. So when you do a lining um, to a skirt that has a, a back waist zipper, what you would do is then you would sew your center back seam up. Um, this is my front, but pretend, you know, like it's reversed. You put the opening at the front for a button front and you put the opening at the back if it's a back because you're going to put the seam, the zipper in the center back seam at the waist. And so you can just sew up your center back seam up to that notch where your zipper is going to go, hem your skirt. Same with your outer skirt, do the same thing, hem your outer skirt, and then you put your zipper in your um, outer skirt, and then you attach your lining. And so um, you don't have the uh, interesting hem button placket 
um, joining going on in a line skirt with a button placket. So, so let's see here. I think what they recommend, let me get the English directions. Um, they, there's not very many directions. It's a very small little booklet. I'm not using interfacing on my skirt as well because the placket is um, folded twice and then the lining goes behind it. I'm not gonna put any interfacing. It's just too much bulk right there. And I find the interfacing, I think it's shrinking. Let's do that on my thread. So, so let's see. So they want you to hem the skirt with the button placket still open, which for me is like, <laughs> I don't really wanna do that. Um, And then you attach your skirt lining, hem your, hem your skirt lining. Let's see, wait, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the bottom of the skirt with your surgery. You're using a large zigzag. It's a one and five eighths inch hem. I like big hems. Yeah, so it's got a narrow hem for the lining, a wider hem for the skirt. <clears throat> and so this is the skirt you're seeing hanging over, sorry. See, this is the skirt, this is the outer skirt, so the skirt lining hangs over, but shorter than the skirt, so. So I'm gonna hem my skirt. I'm gonna hem my uh, lining first since I have white thread on. White. <laughs> The Rita shirt dress is another good dress. I liked that dress. Oh, what about the Charlie Captain, you guys? Anyone want one of those? Getting back to our um, dress conversation. I'm gonna make another one of those because I don't like my video that's up. I've already posted 64 videos, you guys. So, you know, like my hundredth video isn't too far away. Pretty funny, huh? It's 35 videos, but if I did eight a month just streaming, does the site seem? Yeah, I'm gonna open it up. If I did eight a month, you know, like four months away and that's just streaming I'm gonna start uploading more videos it's pretty cool can't believe that it's so fast they really pile up I'm just roll hemming this obviously huh It wants to do it, it's satisfying. I need to press my seam allowance is open still. The lining at the center front gets tucked um, into the placket, so you don't need to finish this edge. Um, and the waist seam gets just tucked into the waistband. The Charlie Captain does not have a collar. And, it, and it's a very specific silhouette, um, but it is so comfortable. 
I know, right, you guys? 100? That's pretty crazy. 65. So that's like, you know... And that was like a couple weeks ago that I saw that. So I've already got like four more videos. Like I've got like 32, you know, to do. And so that really is like right around the corner, you know? It's pretty crazy. We'll have to do something. Just kind of looking at it, making sure I'm not getting any significant torque on these curvy areas, but it looks pretty good. This is the curviest. It looks pretty good though. Happy with that. All right, now let's um, change our thread before we forget. Have you guys ever heard the expression um, when your heart skips a beat? Right, and and you guys like you have you ever had that happen? You when your heart skips a beat. I'm curious. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> There's a lot of bobbins sitting here. Why are there so many bobbins? I have three cream bobbins. I wound two blue bobbins, but look at all that I still have. Oh, this is the oh, okay. That's the lesser one. All right. Yeah, my heart's been skipping a beat yet since yesterday a lot, and my husband's like, "What do you mean skipping a beat?" He's like, "Well, I've heard that expression before, but I didn't think it actually happened." I'm like, yeah, you've never had your heart skip a beat. He's like, "No," he was laughing. Okay. Um, where's my sample fabric? Here we go. All right, I think I'm going to iron um, this hem. When you were pregnant, interesting. I think I remember that too. Yeah, it's always happened to me. But sometimes I'll have a phase where it does it a lot, like for a couple of days. It's annoying. Yeah, I Googled it because I was like, okay, wait, maybe, I don't think it's, it's not really skipping, you know, like it's still beating, <laughs> you know, it's just an expression, people call it that. Yeah, look at that, that's pretty cool. Where it matches, it's so satisfying. All right, so I think that um, I'm not going to do an inch and five eighths, but I am going to do about an inch. Hmm, I need some pins. I'm 
marking my uh, notches. Actually, I'm just gonna iron it. <laughs> it's better. What if our me made May was more of a pledge to finish things we already have rather than start something new? Can you guys even see? Sorry. I'm kind of folding it right up to the notch so that there's room to fold right there. UFOs, Christy, good job. Amelia, you're like. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be all your UFOs. Finish along. I like that. I'm going to see. Hmm. Kind of want something like that. Okay, so I'm going to iron a little bit and then I'm going to hold my lining up to it because I want to see if my lining is actually shorter. Very important. So it could be a little shorter, not like that. The line's gonna sit on top, but I kind of want it to be like that to cover the hem. Like that. So maybe I will do the recommended amount. All right, so I'm gonna fold under an edge first, all the way around, like this. This is easier. Yeah. 
<laughs> you could create some sewing whips, right? All right, so so along it is. Um, what if we made it a dress so along and you could do whatever dress you want? Kind of a choose your own adventure. I can try and sew as many as your dresses as possible. <laughs> I might have some of them as patterns. I'm going to start thinking about it because I'm going to think about this in conjunction with my Me Made May pledge because I forget you, you need to like make a pledge of what you want to accomplish. You know? It can be as simple as just wearing something you made as as you know every day of the month you know okay so this is one of those hems that's not gonna um lay flat see and i will this So what I'm doing is I'm making sure it lines up at like a seam and then in between there I'm going to tuck it, you know. I know, right Christy? That's why I was like I could try and sew a bunch of them, but um, right? Alright, so let's, we just need to decide on one <clears throat> and maybe hope it has a uh, a top version as well so if someone doesn't want to dress like Ida or um, or we do like a top skirt combo this is too much right here this is too much I'm down for whatever you guys want to do also whatever you want it sounds like the Wixton's out because it's out of stock you can go to uh, fabric stores that are selling it. But that's kind of dicey that we'd all get it, you know? Um, oh, look at that Kielo wrap dress. Okay, I'm going to compare my fronts.
took forever. Now you see why I don't always iron. <laughs> All right, so um, there'd be a few ways to deal with this hem. Um, you can tell that it's not going to lay flat all the way around. Um, so you can tuck it, which is what I'm going to do. Um, you can also try to get it in there by putting an easing stitch right here, you know, just like a stay stitch and then pull a little bit, kind of like we do on the sleeve, you know, um, it's quite a bit, so, you know, it could go okay. So um, this might go badly, but we'll see. So my targets are always the seams. I kind of want my seam to line up where the seam is sewn. That way I know it's not gonna torque a ton. This front section is fine, except for the weird ironing right there. All right, this next section might be a little bit more curvy. So you can see it there. So maybe I'll put in some non-negotiable pins. Oh, my clock is ticking. That's, you're hearing my, my clock. All right, I can do that, you guys. I could also um, like maybe narrow it down to three and then you guys can vote, you know? Yeah, you are hearing my clock. And then it went quiet for a second there. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So the thing when you do these tucks is you don't want to put it all in one tuck because then you might get a point at the hem like that, right? You want to distribute these little tucks the best you can. And the way I like to do it is kind of flatten it out in a few places and then force that amount in between. There's a lot right there though. So let's kind of move some of this away from there. Sometimes the curve is steeper in certain spots on the hem than it is in other places though. Like it's pretty, like there's a lot right here and not very much over here. So let's just see, let's try that. Get my skirt all up here. You're basically just darting it and pleating it. It's a fully acceptable way to deal, deal with this. There are other ways you can deal with it too. You know. <laughs> this one's so little I can't even grab it. The linen does kind of want to um, kind of absorb some of it, which is nice. Maybe I should have made this a two-parter. Is it really almost one? Maybe I'll make this a two-parter, you guys. Yeah. I'll do this hem and then um, we'll finish it on Thursday. It's like already been like two hours. <laughs> I'm not speed sewing like I, I used to try and like, hurry up. I'm a little more relaxed. All right, let's see. Let's see how much we have here to ease in. A little bit, a little bit. So today is the 21st, right? So, um, so we have like 10 days before even May starts. Um, and we don't have to start right at the beginning of May, you know, like we could, we could do it, um, you know, 
I'll see what the first Thursday of May is. I don't even know. My birthday's in May. I love that me made May is <laughs> in May. <laughs> Bye, Christy. Have a happy Easter. I wish we had some personal emojis. Look at all those. Look at that little salamander. He's so cute. Okay, wait. Am I getting off track here? I feel like I'm getting off track there. All right, so I'll come up with three um, options by Thursday. How's that? I'll also post them on Instagram. Look at me, I'm getting a little more cavalier now, just completing it. I better stop that. <laughs> Non-negotiable, right there. There we go. I don't need to. Yeah, I didn't, wouldn't have needed that pleat right there. I just don't want any torquing, and um, I don't want the pleats to be too big. I don't want them to create a crease line on my hem after wearing it, wearing it, wearing it, ironing, ironing, ironing right there. You know, a little like crease um, on this side might eventually show up because it is got that kind of feel. This fabric. Like that little break in, kind of like a denim, you know? Almost through with the back and then there's the front. So we're more than halfway on this hem. And this is the spot where I get the most, most tucks. It's kind of a big tuck right there. I don't really want that much but it really wants to put it all right there. Yeah, it's kind of big. I don't really like that. I'm gonna put one right here. Yours is in May too, Nancy? What day is your birthday? I love having a May birthday. You know, it's like when the weather starts getting better here and um, I don't know. What is this? What is that nonsense? Let's, let's fold that under a little more. Fold that up a little bit. When's your birthday? I want to know. Mine's the 18th. Okay, let's fold this up here at the seam. Oh, hi, Kelly. Oh, cool. That's awesome. I decided I'm gonna make this a two-parter. I'm gonna finish this hem right here and then um, a Thursday we'll finish it. I finished the lining. Here's the lining, it's hemmed, it's ready to go. So what we can do on Thursday is I will, I, have, I still have a few steps. Um, I will put in, attach the lining to the skirt, put the placket, finish the placket, and then um, attach the waistband. You can see all that? What's going on there? What are you doing here? I kind of 
I'm negotiating. Oh, the 28th. All right. <laughs> right, Nancy. That's so funny. Um, I kind of am negotiating with the fabric. I'm kind of letting it do what it wants to do, but still trying to bend my will to it a little bit. With this kind of fabric, this kind of linen-y, bouncy um, weave, you know, it really wants to kind of go all over the place, you know? It doesn't really want to be too tame. But then, of course, when you crease it, the crease never wants to come out, you know? So I'm going to double check my skirt fronts now that I'm here. Like this. I'm just going to notch it. There's a few different iron lines there, so I just want to make sure I get it in the right spot. I also really want a um, right angle right there, you know, because it is my placket. Look at that width change. I may have to look at that. I may need to address that. What I could do is unfold this as much. Leave this here. And then unfold this top part right here to make it wider, make it look less like I just did a width change. How many pins do I have in there? Let me iron that real quick. And we'll see how it did. Yeah, that's true. But you know, I've met some of those people and they're really into those holidays because they're near their birthday. Okay, so let's see. So um, there's tucks right here. Can't even tell. I feel like my hem width is not very consistent. I don't feel like that. It isn't very consistent, I can tell. Here's some tucks here. It looks pretty good. All in all, that looks pretty good. So here is my skirt. I got my pockets in. Yeah, I had a friend that her birthday was on um, Christmas Eve. She was super into Christmas. She had a Christmas village, and she had been known to have a Valentine's Christmas tree because she left her Christmas tree up for that long. Um, and when she, she and I were both pregnant at the same time, I had my daughter in November, and she uh, was due um, early January, I think it was. I can't remember. And... Um, she was so worried that her baby was going to be born on her birthday. She's like, that's the only thing I don't want. I was like, you're not worried about him, him, he, him or her being born, born on a Christmas? And she said, no, I, I, I just don't want the baby born on my birthday. <laughs> I want that day to myself. And she tried everything in her power to get that baby to come out early. She vacuumed and she drank a glass of wine. She did all the little things that would trigger it like mid-December. And she had him, him on her birthday. It's pretty funny. Best laid plans. Oh, look, there's my pocket. Dude, you can't even see it. Pretty cool. All right, well, here's my lining. We'll be on the inside. Very cute. I'm into it. Let me 
Yeah, no. Kind of a mess there, huh? <laughs> no one will ever see it, right? Unless I uh, maybe leave it unbuttoned a little at the bottom. Not important though. It feels good. Like I, I kind of like the weight of how it's all gonna feel. Pretty cool. Well, um, yeah, so on Thursday, we will finish up the placket and the waistband um, and we'll have a skirt. And maybe we'll do some other fun little things. I've been thinking about, um, you know what I was thinking about? You guys have seen those beeswax um, food saver things? We have some of them, they're really great. Um, they're really popular. You can actually DIY your own beeswax cotton pieces and um i wasn't going to do that here just because I, I don't really want to get beeswax in anywhere near my setup um, but there's a lot of great tutorials out there and i'll look up a couple um so i'd have that as a reference but here's my idea i was thinking about taking those and making them into zippered pouches for food saving because I think a lot of people are a little put off by the fact that you mold it over things. It doesn't feel like airtight. Not that it would be airtight zippered, but it's a lot easier. And we do have zipper food pouches that we use that we really like. So I was thinking about doing that and just seeing how easy or hard it would be to sew. Um, and then um, I found the thing I lost. I thought I lost. And it's these bias bars. I really want to do that too. So maybe we'll just do a fun thing or we'll talk about our sew along on Thursday. And we'll let's set some stuff up. And I'm going to start trying to be better about coming up with a good schedule for what I'm going to be making so you guys can plan on it or something. So, um, yeah. Anyway, this went really good. This was really fun. Very relaxing and casual day-to-day -day sewing. A little bit of ASMR. No, <laughs> I'm just teasing. She does awesome. Yeah, I saw, um, I, ref I follow this really great technical outer um, outdoor fabric company called Seattle Fabrics. Um, and their Instagram is something like Repair Layer. <laughs> and they reminded me because I saw them doing a tutorial on how to do it. And I was like, oh, yes, I have this idea that I want to make these beeswax pouches zippered. So, um, what, what printed fabric? This right here? That's the lining of, these are the pockets from my second pair of gingers. Yeah. All my clothes are mix and match now. <laughs> I found some, I saw some cute fabric at the fabric store yesterday too. Didn't buy any yet because I have a few things to sew. Um, and they were all blue and white fabric. So I'm like, eh, maybe I need to get away from this a little bit. But maybe you'll figure out the dresses, figure out a schedule, things like that. And um yeah, we're gonna do some fun things in May. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm not gonna make this big whole event, you know? I'm going casual. No pressure. <laughs> we're relaxed here. <laughs> so anyway, maybe we could do two or three things and you can pick the sew along you wanna do and I'll sew all three. We could do a dress, a top, and shorts. Something like that. Right? Okay guys, well. Have a great weekend. Have a great Easter if you're celebrating it. And um, I will see you on Thursday for sure. I don't think I have anything else to tell you guys. But um, I hope you guys do have a good weekend and you sew something fun for you, not just other people. So have a great time. And um, thanks for coming. You can find me on Instagram. Um, if you like what you see here, subscribe to the channel and then click the little bell to be notified when I go live and then you'll always find out because I may surprise stream occasionally and that's how you'd find out because if you don't follow Instagram or you're not there in that moment, you might miss it because um, I might start doing a little bit more uh, impromptu streams and they may not stay uploaded. We'll, I'm going to decide that because I don't need to keep these uploaded. Streams aren't usually uploaded because they're too long. People don't really want to watch a long stream of me gabbing. So thanks, Diane. Thank you, thank you, Amelia. I'm really happy you guys are here. So, um, And then follow me on Instagram. Uh, you can sign up for the newsletter on my website, soso.live. Um, there's a couple free patterns in there. So, Cool. We're going to make dresses here, Kelly, all summer long. <laughs> I love dresses. <laughs> dresses, and I need some bloomers to go under my dresses, too. 
Thanks, Marsha. All right, guys, have a fabulous weekend. Thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. So I appreciate it. Thanks.